بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس وی آر ہیئر ود لیکچر نمبر 13 آف دا سبجیکٹ سول انجینئرنگ کنسٹرکشن اینڈ گرافکس اینڈ ٹوڈیز ٹاپک از جوائنٹس ان دا بلڈنگ ایز مائی ٹوڈیز ٹاپک از ایٹی پرسینٹ کنسرننگ بلڈنگس ہاؤ ایور اور ٹوڈیز لیکچر ول ناٹ بی ٹوٹلی related to joints in the buildings, it should be joints in structures. Anyhow, I am Engineer Shad Muhammad, Lecturer, Department of Civil Engineering at Comsets University, Islamabad, Sahiwal Campus. All right, let's overview what we studied in our previous lecture, let's lecture number 12, that was related to surface finishing, specifically pointing. In uh, lecture number 11, we studied surface finishing related to plastering. In our previous lecture, we studied uh, surface finishing, uh, pointing, uh, little bit nomenclature. We studied uh, technical terminologies related to pointings, pointing purpose, pointing for suitability. We also studied seven different types of pointings, that is flat or flush pointing, struck pointing, recessed pointing, re-pointing, weather pointing, keyed or grooved pointing, tuck pointing. We also studied that keyed and groove pointing are not similar not same pointing but they are similar pointings anyhow the list of pointings are based on uh, the shape or the texture the uh, final sh uh, formulation which it forms so types of pointing are not limited to this uh, seven types in today's lecture that is joints in the building we will be studying something how uh, forces are affecting our buildings and why we need joints in our buildings and components of the buildings which are affected by uh, different forces and where we need to uh, provide joints and different joints for different geometry certainly different geometries will have different joints and uh, which which uh, places are critical to have joints we will discuss those things types of joints uh, we will discuss contraction joints, contraction joints will be subdivided into complete contraction joint, partial contraction joint, dump joints, what are the differences, minute differences in between these contraction joints and we will study sliding joints, construction joints and expansion joints. We will also study a complete range of expansion joints, uh, different sets of uh, um, you can say assemblies which are available uh, to provide expansion joints. We will also study how to choose an expansion joint. Yeah, there is an interesting question. Can a concrete structure be completely free of expansion or contraction joints? Yeah, sometimes it is possible and sometimes there are limitations. Anyhow, we will discuss them in a little detail. All right. As we, uh, as we know that our structures are uh, um, susceptible to different types of forces, uh, they can be natural or they can be due to self-weight and natural, uh, mostly we have designed our structures against gravity loading. So we do, we do not need to uh, worry about natural gravity loading, uh, that is normal, typical loading. Anyhow, some external loadings which are caused by the nature or uh, the thermal expansion and contraction due to temperature variations temperature variations are beyond our controls so uh, we need to consider those variations in our structures before designing and construction constructing our structures uh, due to temperature variation our structures can expand and ex our structures can contract when there is too much heat uh, structures expand based on its uh, coefficient of thermal uh, and when it is cold then structures contract moisture causes expansion yeah moisture also causes expansion moisture can moisture cause contraction mm. yeah it can cause contraction if uh, your uh, concrete structure is not uh, uh, properly cured and there are uh, cement particles which are not cured and they can cause contraction and that is shrinkage sway uh, caused by the wind the sway can cause uh, their uh, 
a collision between two different structures this sway can be due to uh, earthquake loadings due to earthquake vibrations uh, these uh, two different structures two different height structures have different natural periods so uh, they will vibrate with different frequencies and time periods so there is a chance of collision okay different movements seismic events and differential settlements uh, differential settlements or uh, total settlement total settlement is not dangerous because as a whole structure it settles down so if your structure is not uh, connected with other surface members then uh, there is no harm to the structure otherwise if there is some par partial settlement of one part of the structure and another part is staying above uh, at its own place then there is a concern for providing a joint in the building anyhow uh, these are uh, four five different types of forces uh, which have which are natural and uh, which do affect your joints in the buildings uh, building sway seismic motions seismic motions can be horizontal and seismic mo motion can be vertical in um, higher magnitude earthquakes uh, seismic motion is vertical and ex moisture expansion and uh, thermal contraction and thermal expansion all right uh, different components which are affected are these floors interior walls you can see that floors uh, this one this is floor we have provided we can provide and we sh should provide uh, joints uh, at floor level interior walls if walls are too much continuous then we need to provide joints to break that continuity or uh, to break the mm, development of uh, continuous stresses and uh, ceilings ceilings this one is five ceilings and exterior walls exterior walls also need uh, a breakage in its continuity uh, floor to wall and uh, floors floor to wall number five this is floor and this is wall in between this floor to wall you sometimes need to have a joint and a wall to wall different walls this is horizontal wall and this is vertical uh, so we need to have some joints here too ceiling to wall this is ceiling and uh, this is wall here is a joint too and roof roof has have its own joints all right these joints are based on a loading and its length and span and the type of material which is composed and uh, based on its environmental conditions if ex your spans are too long you must have seen that in boundary walls you uh, have to provide some columns or some reinforcement uh, for uh, to the walls otherwise your uh, your step your walls will not be stable enough and uh, you must have seen that your if your uh, columns are too slender then there is a buckling effect so you, you need to have some uh, supportive elements like walls so you need to have some joints many structures and if your span of the slab is too big then you need to have uh, joints different joints for different geometry as you can see an airport structure is shown and uh, there are different shapes of structures and uh, you must have studied its different components or different parts of the airport in your transportation engineering two or transportation engineering one and uh, you can see that here reddit portion are uh, joints provided in different you know, structures located wherever there is a change in building directional expansion if, if there is a change in direction then we need to have uh, we need to provide joints separate large masses into smaller sections uh, larger masses are separated this is a large mass and it's separated and this is large mass so these two large masses are separated from each other by providing some uh, centimeter or few inches joint and the joint should slice and separate slice means to separate the entire building sections it should uh, separate the entire building sections completely not to the foundation there are requirements that a uh, joint should continue and start from which level to which level anyhow we will study in, uh, our, in this lecture okay uh, located uh, same text and uh, you can see that wall and ceiling condition here a joint can be provided here joint can be provided wall to wall condition in between walls can, joint can be provided in between ceilings a joint can be provided 
फ्लोर कंडीशन फ्लोर टू फ्लोर कंडीशन जॉइंट कैन बी प्रोवाइडेड एज यू हैव सीन इफ यू आर जस्ट डूइंग कॉन्टीन्यूस कंक्रीटिंग देन अ टाइम कम्स दैट टाइम हैज़ फिनिश्ड एंड यू हैव टू कंटिन्यू दिस कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑन नेक्स्ट डे एंड स्टिल यू नीड टू प्रोवाइड अ जॉइंट दैट इज कंस्ट्रक्शन जॉइंट एंड इफ यू आर कंस्ट्रक्टिंग अ वॉल एंड दैट कंस्ट्रक्शन हैज बिन लेफ्ट इन बिटवीन एंड टाइम हैज लैप्सड दैन यू मस्ट provide a joint in between the wall that must be construction joint and sometimes you need to provide expansion joint sliding joints and uh, contraction joint okay and this is uh, some under building under construction and this is some horizontal joint in between the slab and uh, in between two structures or in between slab and this is vertical joint and you can have you can provide a covering material just to uh, hide this construction joint which which is a usual practice this construction joint this vertical joint uh, can be uh, height all right and joints in the buildings this is uh, this you can see different pictures of joints provided this is uh, a material to provide the joint is it is a similar material is used in between a floor you can see that this is for fire proofing uh, if a uh, uh, there is some fire here and then there is a discontinuation and uh, fire or heat or due to expansion it can expand this side and this and expand this side and due to uh, excessive stresses maybe this uh, jets outwards and you can see that uh, this is vertical joint and uh, these there are hooks available and it will fix itself and insert itself in between the, these different walls and uh, when there is um, compress compressive type of forces then it will uh, squeeze or it will contract uh, these hooks anyhow these are used in schools uh, hospitals shopping centers industrial buildings housings airports railway stations layer centers layer centers are uh, free recreational centers car parks etc car parks are car vertical car parks uh, all right joints in the building the separation or plane of weaknesses it can be a separation and it can be a plane of weaknesses separation need not to be set as a plane of weaknesses plane of weaknesses are separate uh, introduced at different locations in the buildings are known as joints in the buildings construction joints are placed in the concrete to compensate uh, for expansion and contraction of the material uh, construction joints are need to be placed not only for expansion and contraction of the material construction joints are sometimes necessary requirement irrespective of expansion and contraction and due to weather conditions uh, in order to avoid cracks uh, concrete installers uh, will predict where the concrete will crack and how it will expand uh, you know after uh, there are some recommended guidelines uh, provided by uh, ACI American Concrete Institution Uh, regarding the spans after which you need to provide construction joint or expansion joint or uh, contraction joint as i have told you that uh, every construction joint need not to be an expansion or contraction joint we will discuss in this lecture uh, what are the differences between these joints uh, when joints are provided in the building reasonable care has to be exercised for the location design detailing of the joints selecting material for forming and filling the joint there are specific locations in which you need to provide joints you cannot provide joints everywhere um, based on critical locations based on uh, load carrying capacities load carrying path and the type of behavior of that member you need to consider every these aspects if that is shear uh, and you are providing a joint at a critical section of the shear member then that is uh, a mistake and if this is bending and uh, combined bending and flexure uh, then you need to consider those things and uh, there is proper design for these joints and detailing for these joints as uh, these are the, um, the uh, separations in between two different uh, structures or two different components of the building so these needs special detailing selecting materials for uh, forming you need to have some specific material as you might have seen on flyovers uh, in between there are separation uh, in between there uh, simply supported girders there are uh, 
a material filling of the joints there is some specific type of formation specific type of material is provided all building materials expand or contract yeah every material expands or contracts space uh, but there is some therm uh, coefficient of thermal expansion uh, so based on those things that because that is a material property so with change in temperature and variation in moisture content there are two major effects uh, due to which building materials or building members expand or contract yeah building members can expand and contract based on its spans but building materials can expand and contract based on its material so you can say that uh, geometry as well as material both affects expansion and contraction thus uh, major dimensional changes are caused in structures due to expansion or contraction of materials used in construction the magnitude of these changes varies with the type of material used uh, certainly if uh, a loose material is used if thermal uh, expansion is more than uh, due to minor changes in temperature there will be a lot of expansion to overcome this problem large and multi storied buildings may either be constructed monolithically with heavy reinforcement there are two choices uh, to link each of their component parts or they may be provided with a number of joints if you are uh, constructing a multi storied high rise building or tall building then you uh, are bound to provide two you have you are uh, bound to have two options either you provide a monolithic members with heavy reinforcement so that they resist the compressive stresses and the tensile stresses which are created due to non availability of construction that um, contraction and expansion joints to link each other components or you may provide a number of joints all right if there is a joint then there is a separation and uh, you must be knowing that stresses need a path to flow if there is no path and this there is a disruption in between the path and there are no stress transfer mechanism available so stresses will multiply itself with zero stresses will automatically eliminate if you are uh, not providing joints then there are stresses available and stresses will continue to transfer itself so you need to uh, have heavier resistance and that resistance can be provided by providing an alternative material that is heavy reinforcement uh, if you are uh, dealing with concrete okay suitability of the building joints uh, joints are usually provided in, in large uh, or multi storied buildings uh, multi story buildings and large buildings uh, certainly larger larger buildings have will have larger spans and uh, larger dimensioning so you need to provide in multi story buildings but joints should not be provided in shell structures shell structures are these type of structures um, and certain other rigid structures where provision of joints interferes with the rigidity of the structure all right uh, these are shell structures these are thin okay they, we have defined it here shell structures in the building uh, construction a thin curved plate like structure thin it should be thin uh, one dimension is thin uh, as compared to other two dimensions and uh, plate like structure it is plate uh, slab and plate are two different structures uh, anyhow we you must have differentiated these things that's uh, what is a flat plate flat slab uh, and uh, shell structure in our uh, reinforced concrete design structure shaped to transmit applied forces by compressive compressive tensile and shear stresses that act in the plane of the surface there are uh, stresses uh, tensile stresses compressive stresses and shell stresses uh, when uh, they are susceptible to loading conditions and they are usually uh, constructed of concrete reinforced with uh, steel mesh also you can see short concreting so they are continuous structures and uh, they resist the loading based on its uh, shape rather than depending a lot on its material or ge uh, geometrically it is resisting those uh, forces rather than based on material very good concept anyhow you need not to provide uh, build, building joints in such continuous structures or uh, extra rigid members such as uh, girders 
in between girders uh, or other rigid members which are essential for structural uh, stability or uh, load path first type of joint that is contraction joint and the joints introduced in concrete structures to localize shrinkage movement are known as contraction Maybe due to improper hydration or um, means uh, maybe due to proper hydration, there is shrinkage concept of shrinkage in concrete uh, materials. So um, concrete shrinks and tries to contract itself, and uh, as they are uh, joined with other members, so there is a con con uh, compressive stresses developed in the that member. So instead of providing uh, resisting those contracting stresses. And providing reinforcement against those stresses you need to provide uh, contraction joints otherwise if you don't provide contraction joint or additional reinforcement then there will be cracks um, formulation contraction joint are in the form of separations or plane of weaknesses certainly they are separated and uh, these are the plane of weaknesses or plane of separations the function of these joints is to localize shrinkage movement which would otherwise lead to unslightly cracks um, means the cracks which are uh, not acceptable this is a structure heavily uh, heavy re, uh, rcc structure and you can see that this is shrinkage cracking these are not fluctuate cracking as you can see this member is placed on the ground and this are uh, shrinkage cracking okay there is a small concept uh, where you want to provide reinforcement if you are uh, not providing a joint just look at the if you are expecting that your crack will be uh, exp be running through this direction then you need to provide reinforcement in this direction here double bars you need to provide okay contraction joints these are uh, on roads I, as i told you in the start of our lecture that our joints concept will not be only related to buildings uh, you can see this is uh, maybe a flyover and there is a separation this is uh, so okay contraction joints have three different types of uh, joints complete contraction joint in this type of uh, contraction joint the bond between adjacent sections of the structure may be broken completely by painting what one surface with a bituminous uh, material or by setting a layer of waterproof paper or roofing felt roofing felt this is a roofing felt material against the face of the section before casting the next adjacent section one section is cast there is a separation in between and another section is cast and that contraction joint should be broken completely uh, towards its base the contraction joints are provided in thick sections of the concrete to localize shrinkage and thick sections they are provided contraction joints uh, uh, complete contraction joints in thin sections you don't need complete contraction joints as they are very thin and uh, you need to um, okay you can see this uh, okay partial contraction joints in this type of contraction joint the reinforcement is continued across the joints and uh, complete contraction joint reinforcement is discontinued and its uh, reinforcement is continued due to the presence of reinforcement the movement of such joints is usually very small uh, as you, uh, these contraction or uh, compressive forces will be resisted by reinforcement so uh, this ex uh, joints movement will be very small these contraction joints are provided in uh, concrete section where structure stability is also required in addition to localized shrinkage as you are aware that in concrete um, contraction joint there was a uh, cut off of the reinforcement and all the whole the member of uh, both sides will uh, were discontinued and were not connected uh, so there was no structural stability issue in that so um, if you want to provide a structural stability and uh, also localized shrinkage so you need to provide this uh, partial contraction joint you can see complete contraction joint this is your reinforcement this is RCC member and uh, this is uh, key formulation of the key and this, this is water power or you can uh, also have double bars this is partial contraction joint uh, reinforcement is continued this is uh, having discontinuation but uh, compressive stresses will be resisted by partially resisted by this uh, reinforcement so there will be uh, quite controlled contraction 
okay there is third type of contraction joint that is dump joints and this type of contraction joint a plane of weakness is created by forming a groove in either or each of the surface of the concrete structure uh, a small groove is provided in a structure the total depth of uh, such a groove is one third to one fifth of the thickness of the member this is this is the thickness of the member so one third or one fifth one fifth is more smaller than one third one third or one fifth of the member you need to provide a self created socket um, contraction joint groove and this will introduce a plane of weakness and uh, induce shrinkage cut below the socket it will uh, be automatically weakened so these contraction joints are uh, used more particularly in thin structures thin sections of the concrete such as floor slabs and roof slabs in floor slabs if you are not providing rcc then you can provide uh, dump joints okay these are the contraction joints uh, this is complete contraction joint partial contraction joint typical expansion joint and typical sliding joints we'll discuss this in our upcoming slides complete contraction joint you can see uh, water bars okay discontinuity in concrete but no initial gap there's a discontinuity in concrete but there's no uh, initial gap discontinuity uh, discontinuity in steel a uh, discontinuity in steel and discontinuity in concrete hole but there is a key provided okay this complete contraction joint and this is partial contraction joint uh, strip painting above you have provided a painting and there is uh, joint sealing compound and uh, discontinuity in the concrete member and continuity in steel you can see uh, if steels are continue and there is a uh, discontinuity in the concrete then uh, water can percolate inside and uh, this steel can be uh, can have oxidation reaction and it will form rusting and uh, with the passage of time as you know rusting uh, expands itself and uh, there is formation of iron oxide and uh, these will have disrupting effects on your concrete member this is the typical expansion joints uh, there is a cushion uh, joint filler a soft joint filler is provided and initial gap and uh, their uh, discontinuity of the steel and discontinuity of the member and in uh, the difference between the expansion joint and contraction joint is this that there is no discontinuity there is a discontinuity but there is no gap in between these members but here is a proper gap provided so that uh, due to expansion these can expand and uh, this uh, soft material can contract itself and this is a typical sliding joint sliding joint uh, here it can slide and uh, vertically it can slide stripping paint and uh, joint sealing compound prepared sliding surface or rub rubber pad that's interesting okay second type of joint is a uh, sliding joint joint provided between two parts enabling their movement freely in both the planes are uh, known as sliding joints in both the planes if uh, your member horizontal plane or vertical plane your, if your member can expand and contract freely then uh, that is a sliding joint these joints are usually formed by applying a layer of plaster on one of the surfaces and finishing it smooth uh, so as to act as a seat of the sliding joint one of the surfaces is provided as a smooth so that there is no friction and uh, another member can slide uh, smoothly the seat is then allowed to uh, be hardened and covered with the required thickness of bitumen material uh, uh, or otherwise treated as specified to form a slip plane before another portion is passed onto it there is a proper formulation of slipping slipping plane and uh, that can be provided by any smooth material any integrated material uh, or any external placement of uh, external substance and uh, you, uh, you need to be focused on providing a smooth material in between two different uh, concrete panels uh, members the function of these joints is to enable freedom of movements of the two parts in both planes all right this is the fundamental difference of sliding joint and with as compared to other joints these joints are used when variation temperature moisture content or loading results in tendency for one part to move in plane at right angles 
to uh, plane of other parts of the structure. All right, there is a, uh, they are provided in those parts where there is an expansion in uh, right angle type of expansion. Okay. Third type of joint is very important and very common that is construction joint. The joint provided at locations where construction stops for any reason and where their location does not coincide with that of expansion or contraction joint is called construction joint. If construction joint uh, location coincides with expansion and contraction joint then it need not to be called contraction um, construction joint it need to be called expansion or contraction joint because the purpose of construction joint is different than expansion and contraction joints these joints are constructed in a similar manner as uh, contraction joints but these joints are not in intended to accommodate movement due to contraction as uh, we have discussed that construction joints if their location is different than expansion and contraction joint then they are construction joint if they are uh, construction joint you have uh, due to your uh, own efficiency you have provided construction joint uh, at places where you need to provide expansion or contraction joint and these joints will be called as expansion or contraction joint every effort okay <coughs> sorry every effort should be made to prevent movement <laughs> Sorry. Every effort should be made to prevent movement occurring at such uh, joints. Um, yeah, you need to prevent movement uh, at such joints. All other joints are helping in uh, providing some movement in the joints, but this this is preventing movement. However, extra care may be taken to obtain a good bond between uh, a betting sections supporting sections of the concrete a good bond need to be provided these joints are placed construction joints are placed uh, to keep new concrete in place yeah you have provided an old concrete and you are uh, uh, attaching a new concrete in place you need to provide a construction joint these are essentially screed rails um, made from wood metal or um, plastic and are placed during pouring and finishing of the concrete these are screed uh, rails the construction joints will allow you to pour the concrete in steps and control the slab placement this is a slab placement according to your own requirement you can also use construction joint as contraction joints uh, if you plan the placement well yeah i told you that construction joints can be provided uh, as contraction joint and then they will be said as contraction joints rather than construction joints the towel wires are provided externally and uh, the uh, this is the screed, uh, screed rail and uh, later on if you are concreting here and you will just place the formwork and there will be proper bonding uh, if on second day of concreting you are concreting here. These are the dowel bars. These uh, are the construction joints. This is a floor, concreting in the floor and these are the dowel bars and contraction joints, construction joints. Sorry. Since crack, uh, cracks frequently develop at these joints uh, as a result of stresses arising from variation in temperature, moisture content and loading. Therefore, in, it is most uh, desirable that construction joints should coincide with expansion and contraction joint wherever possible. Uh, yeah, stresses can develop in these portions and uh, these are uh, generally weaker portions because there is a joint and it is very hard to ensure that joint is uh, powerful enough, strengthful enough to resist those stresses. Anyhow, they can resist those stresses, but there will be uh, some cracks developed. But it will be wise uh, decision if you provide expansion or contraction joint, construction joint. If you provide construction joint at the places where expansion and contraction joints need to be provided. The function of these joints is to simplify the construction of the structure simply. Uh, joint construction in uh, floor should be located in the middle of spans of the slab. If you are providing slab floor, then it should be in middle of the slab, beams or girders, unless a beam intersects uh, the girder at this point. In beams and girders, it should be at middle of the uh, slabs, as uh, near sl support conditions they are of the shear is critical, so um, should be aware about that. In which cases the joints in the girders are provided at a distance equal to twice the width of the beam. 
Okay, if there is an intersection, then the joint uh, in the girder should be provided at equal distance, twice the width of the beam. Construction joints, uh, adequate provision should be made for a uh, shear by using inclined reinforcement to resist shear. You need to provide, uh, theoretically, you need to provide inclined shear reinforcement that is tie or stirrups, uh, but uh, practically, you need to provide vertical, uh, you cannot provide inclined shear reinforcement, so you need to provide vertical shear reinforcement. Uh, joints in columns should be made uh, at the underside of the floor. Okay, if there is a floor and uh, there is a column, then if you are providing a joint in the column, then you should not provide at the uh, beginning of the column or in between the column. It should be underside of the floor. Construction joint should be at underside of the floor. You might have seen that uh, we are constructing a multiple story building and uh, that frame structure and uh, that masons and uh, contractor have concreted uh, that uh, column and a few reinforcement bars are uh, visible upside and then uh, they start uh, centering and shuttering uh, for the slab and uh, you must have seen that that is the construction joint uh, provided underside of the floor okay now we should study some recommendations of a American Concrete Institute uh, 224.3R uh, joints in the concrete construction. What they suggest? These are the standards, uh, standard protocols which are recommended by uh, American Concrete Institute, the course which we are following in Pakistan too. Uh, chapter number three, uh, buildings uh, for monolithic construction, construction which is monolithic, a good construction joint. Uh, might be a bonded interface. A good construction joint is a bonded interface that provides a watertight surface. Certainly, there is a watertight surface. There should be a watertight surface and allow allows for flexure and shear continuity to through the interface. Let's look at this structure. This is uh, constructed in pieces, so it needs to provide uh, shear and flexure continuity. Uh, behavior. But load uh, resisting mechanism should continue and they should be bonded these materials and uh, should be bonded irrespective of this, this there is a discontinuation in construction without this uh, continuity a weakened region results uh, that may uh, serve as a contraction or expansion and without this continuity without ensuring a continuity then there must be a, there, uh, they will serve as a contraction or expansion and, and they are plain of weaknesses rather than strength yeah. Joint construction. Uh, how you are provide, how you will be able to provide a joint to achieve a well bonded watertight interface. How you are going to achieve that? A few conditions should uh, be met before placement of the fresh concrete. What are those conditions? The hardened concrete is usually specified to be clean and free of lightens. Uh, hardened concrete should be should be really specified to be clean and uh, free of lightens. Older joints uh, need additional surface preparation. Certainly, if your uh, concreting has uh, is quite older, then you need special preparation techniques. And concrete that has to be set uh, that has set should be prepared using wet sand blast or high, ultra high pressure uh, water jet. There are two techniques uh, to prepare that surface uh, uh, using uh, wet sand blast and uh, ultra high pressure water jet. Uh, videos are available on YouTube. You can find them. Uh, okay, ACI 318 states that uh, existing concrete should be moistened thoroughly before placement of fresh concrete. Existing concrete should be uh, moistened. Concrete that has dried out uh, may require saturation for few days or more. Okay, that is interesting. But concrete that has been placed recently will not require additional water because that is clean and free of lightens. Only in a uh, few hours elapse, uh, only in few hour duration between successive placement, a visual check is needed to be sure that loose particles, dirt, and lightens are removed. The new concrete will be adequately bonded to the hardened green concrete. A hardened green concrete, green concrete is the fresh concrete, uh, freshly placed, provided that the new concrete is vibrated thoroughly. Vibrated thoroughly. You should vibrate your new concrete thoroughly clean by an air water jet or wire brooming. You should broom with the wire and uh, can be done when the concrete is still soft enough that lightens can be removed but hard enough to prevent aggregate from losing. 
you should not be uh, wire brooming or a water jet using water jet pressurized water jet uh, if your uh, if your uh, that member or concrete structure is susceptible to aggregate disintegration or loosening uh, other methods may also be useful for preparation uh, construction joint for new countries okay for vertical structures vertical elements what you have to do although placement uh, uh, with a depth of 30 feet 30 feet depth vertically has been achieved by conventional formworks okay it is general practice to limit concrete placement to height of one story uh, it is recommended that uh, you should limit your concrete construction to one story in one go horizontal construction joint should be located at the underside of the footing horizontal uh, construction joints horizontally underside of the footing it should be underside of the footing construction joints are provided at the top of the floor slabs top of the floor slabs for capitals should be uh, placed monolithically with the pile cap all right okay the placement of fresh concrete on the horizontal surface can affect structural in integrity of the joint. Okay, that's interesting. Although it is not necessary, uh, it is not always necessary. Common practice has been to provide a bedding layer of mortar of the same proportion as that of the concrete before placement of new concrete above the joint. ACI uh, committee recommends using a bedding, bedding layer of concrete with somewhat more cement sand and water uh, then the design mix of the structure aggregate less than three by four inch can be left in the bedding layer uh, but larger aggregate should be removed this mixture should be placed four to uh, six inches deep and vibrated thoroughly with the regular uh, mixture up placed above the placement of the fresh concrete on the horizontal surface can affect structural integrity of the joint it is stating that uh, previously there was a common practice that uh, you are providing a construction joint and uh, there was a bedding layer of mortar uh, which was having a mixed design of same proportion uh, as, uh, as that of the concrete. Mortar was having same proportion as that used in the concrete. But uh, now as ACI committee recommends that bedding layer should be of uh, uh, instead of uh, mortar you should be using concrete having more cement, sand and water. Uh, then the mixed design of the structure then the mixed design it should be more strengthful than the structure and aggregates uh, size should be 3 by 4 inch is uh, acceptable but larger aggregates are need sh should be removed and uh, furthermore concrete should be placed in layers 4 uh, to 6 inches deep and uh, there should be a proper vibration so that uh, there is a proper bonding with your previous uh, joint Okay, shear transfer and bending in uh, at horizontal joints should be addressed in much same way uh, it is for beams and slabs. Okay, beams and slabs. If you are uh, having a shear transfer, then it should be properly addressed as uh, in beams and slabs. There are proper joints details in uh, ACI uh, codes books. The reinforcement should continue through the joint with adequate length to ensure complete splice. There should be splice um, development length. If the joint is subjected to lateral shear, load transfer by shear friction and dowel is added. If there is a lateral shear, then there should be uh, some dowel uh, bars provided which will resist the shear stresses. Mass concrete mass concrete first it is the definition of mass concrete what why what is mass concrete aci 116r these are the committees of the aci sub committees of the aci uh, if you become expert of your field and uh, then you can become a member of those committees and you can provide uh, some research uh, oriented reviews and uh, then after standardizing those uh, rules and researches and ACI uh, then these becomes a part of ACI code book. ACI defines the mass concrete as any volume of concrete with dimensions large enough to require that mayor to be taken to cope with the generation of heat from hydration of the cement and attendant volume change to minimize crack. 
any dimension large enough. ACI does not recommend the, what is the minimum and maximum range of the mass concrete. It says that any volume of the concrete, uh, irrespective of its dimension, if you think that there is a lot of generation of heat of hydration from the cement, then uh, there is a lot of change in volume. Uh, so, to, uh, due to change in volume, there is a susceptibility of the member to cracking. So that will be the defined as mass concreting. Placing. The surface should be left free from uh, protruding rocks, deep footprints, vibrator holes and other uh, surface irregularities. In general, surface should be relatively even. Surface before uh, placement of the concrete uh, surface should be even and gentle slope for drainage. Before the placement of the next lift, uh, the surface film or contamination should be removed and to expose a fresh clean mortar and aggregate surface. Overcutting uh, to deep expose, uh, deeply expose aggregate is unnecessary and wasteful of good material. Okay, you should not overcut the previously uh, having member. Otherwise, uh, exposure of aggregate is unnecessary and wasteful of the material. Okay, placing how you are going to place that. This is uh, pressurized spraying. Of the previous in, uh, old concreting strength of bond is accomplished by cement grains that is interesting strength is gained by the cement grains not by putting coarse aggregates coarse aggregates are not strength uh, givers usually uh, removal of few millimeters of inferior material will reveal satisfactory surface you just remove or extrude the few millimeters and have engravement on the previous surface and a few millimeters deep and the best method of obtaining such clean surface uh, are by means of wet sand blasting, wet sand blasting, or high uh, high pressure water jets at the at least pressure of six thousand psi. Six thousand psi. If you uh, pressurize that surface, then this is these are the two best best methods. And, uh, this has the advantage of being able to clean concrete uh, of any age. Of any age, concrete can be um, cleaned with this. Uh, these two methods the water jet method may not work as efficiently uh, after the concrete is more than a week old let's say the water jet method uh, will not be efficient enough if your concrete is uh, a week uh, more than a week old uh, otherwise sand bath method uh, water's uh, wet sand blasting method should be used the initially acceptable surface may become dull with lime coating uh, or become contaminated with such uh, to such an extent that it may be necessary to use sand blasting or high pressure water just to reclean it okay it said that initially if you have acceptable surface uh, they may become dull due to lime coating or other contamination uh, pollution and then you need to have some uh, water jets recleaning recleaning uh, recleaning is again means you have cleaned it one side one time and you have to clean that again okay joint construction Pole of water should not be left uh, standing on the wetted surface at the time of placement. That means uh, this is uh, pressurizing and there should not be pool of water. Uh, the surface should uh, be damp. The surface uh, should just be damp. Uh, free surface water will increase the water cement ratio of the new concrete. Yeah, free surface water with uh, if you are placing here concrete and uh, this will uh, water cement ratio of uh, already the member is designed and there is a concrete and the placing and there will water cement ratio will increase at the interface and weaken the bond. Uh, form construction form of construction plays an important role in the quality of the joint. It is essential to minimize the leakage of crowd from under uh, bulkheads. Yeah. If there is a leakage of the crowd, then uh, coarse aggregate will be available above and uh, there will be weaknesses, uh, areas of weak pockets. If the placement is deeper than 6 inches, uh, the possibility of leakage increased due to greater pressure head of the wall get complete. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, grout that escapes under a bulk head will form a thin wedge of material, uh, coarse aggregate wedge of material. It must be cut away before next placement. That must be that weak, uh, weaker material should, must be removed. If not removed, this wedge will not adhere to the fresh concrete. Okay, and uh, under load, 
under loading condition deflection in the element will cause joints to open last placing the concrete surface should be approaching dryness and be free from the surface moisture at the time new concrete is placed on it before placing that uh, concrete should be at uh, dryness and surface moisture should be removed before the concrete new concrete is being placed and this is the third construction joint and uh, you can see that butt type of construction joint this is a butt joint prevent bond edge uh, and this is a butt type construction joint with double bars double bars are smooth double bars coated uh, to prevent bonding this is a construction joint and this is tongue uh, tongue and groove tongue and groove tongue is this and groove is this one this member is having groove and this member is having a tongue uh, construction joint and this is per type of construction joint with uh, tie bars not a con um, contraction joint as double deformed tie bars are used and this is uh, this cannot contract this will resist the contraction so this is not a contraction joint otherwise these other uh, joints can be used as a contraction joint but they are also construction joint construction joint can be an expansion joint and can be a contraction joint uh, if they are provided in those areas otherwise construction joint are construction joints all right these are mass concreting examples, uh, a retaining wall, heavy retaining wall, these are the keys provided. And these are construction joints, rougher surface, uh, surface preparation you need to uh, roughen before concreting and in dams you have to do like this. And uh, this is a construction joint face of the wall. Contraction joint provided, a uh, uh, groove has been provided, a weakness plane has been provided and if there is an expansion then it can expand. Uh, and it can contract an expansion joint it can uh, expand and uh, this expansion joint will contract okay A are the construction joint this is B is the contraction joint and C is the expansion joint the third one the fourth uh, type of joint is expansion joint the joint provided to accommodate expansion of adjacent part of the building are known as expansion joint or right expansion adjacent to these joints are essentially consist of spaces between the adjacent parts of a structure and may sometimes be provided with a low transmit uh, low transmitting devices between the parts uh, these not to be uh, these these uh, gadgets need not to be uh, too soft and sometimes they need to transfer some loading they are generally filled with expansion joint fillers uh, of approved quality an expansion joint is an empty space yeah it is an empty space filled having a filler free uh, of any material between two parts of the structure it goes all the way up to the structure allowing each part to move freely without inter interference this is a free space the size of the expansion joints depend on what deformation are possible deformations are possible in the construction okay if there is a lot of deformation the size of expansion joint will be larger whether standard or seismic standard or seismic uh, an expansion joint should uh, allow horizontal vertical and shear movements shear is an inclined movement shear movement it means inclined movements uh, whether it is standard uh, reinforcement or seismic reinforcement or uh, your uh, that uh, structure is designed against uh, standard gravity loads or seismic loading your structure should uh, expansion joints should allow horizontal vertical and shear movement the function of these joints is to accommodate the expansion of adjacent parts of the building and relieve the compressive stresses that may otherwise develop if there is no expansion joint then uh, both sides will expand and there will be a compressive stresses develop these uh, joints are provided in long masonry walls yeah uh, roof and floors uh, and roof uh, or floors uh, to wall joints and frame structures for spaces of these joints in different locations refer to the table uh, given in the upcoming slides expansion joints uh, the design and location of the joint is uh, usually depends upon the type of the structure uh, that's interesting uh, either that is mass uh, concreting uh, even that depends on the uh, your type of material which you are using there are different types of cements 
uh, based on uh, heat of hydration, you have to consider if there are marine structures, uh, there is rapid setting cement, uh, then you have to consider those uh, joints accordingly. The method of construction and the joint uh, material available. The provision of the joints should be adequate to accommodate all dimensional changes caused by expansion and contraction of the material used in the structure. Accommodate all the dimensional changes. All right. There's a wall and there's an expansion joint and slab and there's a contraction joint. This is a 3D structure. I don't use uh, that uh, misguided. This is a 3D structure and there's an expansion joint. Uh, this uh, slab should expand freely and uh, there should be a contraction joint. There's a groove provided, a downline groove. Right. In case of masonry wall, Okay, expansion joint. How long should be expansion joint? In case of masonry wall, uh, there is a wall, continuous wall. The vertical control joint, vertically, uh, you should uh, have an expansion joint should be provided from top of the wall to the top of the concrete foundation. There is a concrete foundation be uh, beneath the wall and uh, from top of the wall uh, to uh, concrete foundation, there should be an expansion joint and not through the foundation concrete, uh, not through the foundation concrete, should, foundation should be homogeneous and monolithic the reinforcement should not pass through such joints reinforcement should not pass through there's a uh, masonry wall joints in case of masonry wall resting on pile foundation if there are pile foundation and there is pile cap and there is a masonry wall the vertical control joints should be taken up to the uh, top of the grade beam there is a grade beam above the pile cap uh, or pile cap is uh, having a grade beam that is concrete cap over the piles without making use of any reinforcement uh, passing through the joints. Okay, uh, your reinforcement, your masonry wall should have vertical control joint from top of the uh, masonry wall to the grade beam. And uh, grade beam is the, by grade beam it means that pile caps. Here it means pile caps. In case of reinforced concrete frames structures, RCC, reinforced concrete, uh, reinforced cement concrete, uh, the vertical control joint between any two columns, any two columns, there is a vertical column joint should extend from top of the column to the top of the pedestal over uh, provided over the there, there is uh, being underneath column there is a pedestal and uh, that should be continued from top of the column to uh, the support of the column or RCC footing and RCC footing should be monolithic okay uh, expansion joint causes of the movements uh, causes of the expansion move, concrete removal if there is a concrete removal uh, joint will expand expansion and contraction of the due to temperature challenges settlement of the structure movement generation in the uh, vibrations earthquakes we have discussed it in our uh, initial slides and uh, how to choose an expansion joint, uh, certainly the, these are the factors which are depending uh, before a selection of the expansion joint, location, floors, uh, either it is floor, wall, facades, facades are uh, the front uh, architectural portion of the buildings, uh, they are uh, mostly glasses of frame structures, uh, on the buildings, ceilings, initial gap, uh, how much is provided, expected movement, expected load, passage, waterproofing requirement, flushing, uh, flush or inserted installation, there should be a type of finish and fire resistance and cost. These uh, all factors need to be considered before providing an expansion joint. This is a double bar and expansion cap and uh, filler. Okay. The type of movement in the bin, okay, the standard expansion joint allows the range of motion. Okay, how much expansion joint, what is the range of expansion? Beam? Okay, the standard expansion joint allows the range of motion. Okay, how much expansion joint, what is the range of expansion? Is plus minus 25% of the nominal joint width. This is the nominal joint width, this is 25%. Uh, it will either expand or it will contract from either side. Okay. A complete range of expansion joints, uh, you can see these uh, expansion joints, these are expansion joints and these are the materials to protect the co uh, and cover expansion joints flat and angle on facades, floors and walls and ceilings. Joint covers can be used and uh, with their few, uh, it is a registered trademark and see Becker's rods uh, officially tested and validated for joint caps from 10 to 20, uh, 200 millimeter. These can be used and uh, these are 
uh, with FU uh, registered N blankets uh, officially tested and related uh, gap of uh, this much millimeter and plus minus movement uh, range of movement has also been shown these are expansion joints and uh, here it is a uh, floor and here it is floor and it can expand uh, standard floor joint uh, okay car parking floor joints this, these are the car parking floor joints this can expand itself and floor for flexible floors uh, for flexible floors here it will be floor and here it will flow then it can uh, contract itself these are structural work ranges structural uh, expansion joints okay flexible profiles uh, uh, flexible profiles adjusted for fast and economical closure of expansion joints okay facade joints for facade uh, joints uh, expansion joint technical joints closed facades walls and roof joints control joints sealed applications Usually you should be knowing uh, this picture is shown and you should be knowing that it is facade joint and control joints. Many are trademarks. So these are control joints and uh, adhesive application in metal and flexible inserts, co-extruded um, polyvinyl chloride and roof joints. So different type of materials are available in market and water stoppers and uh, nosing aluminium and uh, different type based on different types different shapes different formulation different assemblies different uh, expansion joints are available okay this is the table which was uh, re uh, referred in previous slides item and description spacing recommendation load bearing wall with cross walls at intervals uh, there is a load bearing wall and having cross walls uh, means this is a load bearing wall and having this vertical perpendicular cross wall uh, traditional type of one brick uh, thick or more than 30 millimeter is in maximum interval after which you need to provide an expansion joint wall warehouse type construction without cross walls if there is a warehouse a storage house uh, then you need to provide an expansion joint in the wall at 30 meter maximum interval if the walls uh, are panel walls between columns at no more if there are panel walls then uh, no more than uh, 9 mm center to center no joints are necessary if uh, 9 meter panel walls and no joints are necessary control joints over center of the opening may be provided at half of the spacing of the expansion joint chajas and balconies and parapet wall parapet wall are the uh, topmost roof walls uh, roof wall you provide uh, if your roof is uh, usable then then you need to, to have a parapet wall uh, 6 to 12 millimeter interval you need to provide an expansion joint <coughs> sorry <coughs> all right roofs uh, in roofs ordinary roof slabs of rcc reinforced cement concrete protected by layers of mud uh, puska and other uh, in uh, insulating media in frame structure mud puska is uh, preferred prepared by uh, puddle clay mixed clay with bhusa fibers if you mix a clay with bhusa at the uh, this is the quantity then that is mud puska uh, so you need to provide 20 to 30 meter interval uh, and uh, at changes in direction as in uh, length thickness height or uh, v-shaped structures if there is change in direction otherwise uh, if there is longitudinal uh, wall then after this much this much interval you need to provide an expansion joint thin unprotected slabs 15 meter uh, intervals 15 meter interval you need to provide uh, that these are recommended guidelines uh, you should be aware that these are recommended guidelines these are not uh, uh, terminal decisions that you need to uh, accept and uh, follow them you need to see the situation and uh, dividing the building into two independent structural units corner uh, of length uh, dividing the building into two independent structural units corner uh, of length thickness height and uh, v-shaped structures at 30 meter interval uh, 30 meter interval you need to provide a gun expansion joint and coping Coping is what is coping uh, corresponding uh, to joints in the roof slabs is similar to the 20 to 30 meters coping. Okay, coping is these things. These are the copings. 
uh, some sometimes these are provided off um, you can say marbles just to pro protect your uh, walls underneath due to rain and uh, extreme weather conditions coping is a structure uh, which is constructed on top of the wing wall return walls uh, boundary walls and parapet walls these are different kinds of walls you can uh, google it, it and to protect the masonry a wing wall uh, is a smaller wall attached to the next uh, to the larger wall okay last can a concrete structure be completely free of expansion joints and contraction joints <sighs> difficult to answer uh, anyhow yes it is possible to provide uh, uh, expansion and contraction joint free structures okay for a contraction joint it it may be possible to design a concrete structure without any contraction joint uh, by using sufficient steel reinforcement to spread evenly the crack width over the span length of the structure okay if you provide the reinforcement then you can uh, um, uh, you need you need not to pro provide a contraction joint it may achieve the requirement of the minimum crack width you need to uh, fulfill the minimum crack width recommended by american concrete institution and cause and uh, cause no adverse impact uh, to the aesthetic of the structure yeah there should not be visible cracks available uh, visibly seen and however it follows that the amount of reinforcement required is higher than required for sufficient contraction joint uh, yes it is said that uh, amount of reinforcement required is a little bit higher that is required for sufficient contraction joint for expansion joints the consequence uh, of not providing such joints may be difficult to cater uh he is saying that why it is uh, um, quite difficult to not to provide expansion and uh, how is it exemplifying a concrete structure that has a coefficient of thermal expansion uh this much divided by degree centigrade and young modulus of this much with an increase in temperature of 20 degree centigrade it is restricted uh, to free expansion and if it is restricted to free expansion the structure uh, will subject to an axial stress of this much this much stresses will be de developed mega pascal uh, if the structure is very slender concrete carriage way uh, buckling may occur yeah even if you have provided reinforcement buckling can occur uh, if that is very thin if that is thick then the uh, reinforcement can counter that therefore the structure has to be designed uh, to take up these thermal stresses if expansion joints are not to be provided you should be careful here however uh, for water retaining structures okay water retaining structures expansion and what we need to do that most of them are not affected by weather conditions they are not affected by weather conditions because they are insulated from the water uh, they contain internally and soil backfills that surrounds them all right therefore it is expected that smaller amount of thermal movement will occur when compared to the normal exposed concrete structures okay there is a temperature variation and the water is already available and consequently expansion joints may be omitted in this case with the view that a compressive stress is induced by the thermal expansion toughens the st uh, structure to uh, limit the development of inside stresses all right thank you for listening and that's all if you have any queries you can ask uh, through online sessions and that's it thank you assalamu alaikum